some time to return. In the case where we buffer that full HTML file, no sub-download requests are made for the first you know, three seconds until that HTML file is complete, and then they all come down in a, in a flurry. Whereas in streaming mode, basically as, as Internet Explorer reads the file, it says, oh, I need to go get this image, oh, I need to go get this image, and so forth. And so you'll get a better performance uh, profile when you have streaming mode enabled. But it does, it does disable your ability to do manual, manual modification of traffic. I wanted to mention very briefly the request builder. The request builder basically allows you to go edit a request which has been previously issued and just have Fiddler sort of issue that request again on your behalf. And so you can just drag drop over to the request builder and say, oh, you know, I actually want to make a change to this. You know, I, I want to, you know, remove that accept char set thing header that I added and just go re-execute that request. And so this very quickly allows you to make modifications. People who are testing web services very often will just have Fiddler up and do a bunch of things until they get it right, and then they'll go change their code to make it work. I mentioned the simple filters tab. The autoresponder tab is particularly interesting. It allows you to play back previously captured traffic, which as I mentioned before is very useful when you're trying to debug a scenario for which you don't have traffic. The other scenario where it's very useful is if you want to either change a site without actually going and making a modification. And so I, I think I have a demo of this really quickly. So uh, if, I, if I launch the uh, preview, the IE developer preview, and I, I go to the, oh no, that's not the right one. Let's go back to the home page, and I'm going to do my flying images. Uh, you'll see that now I have the Fiddler Cap logo instead of the Internet Explorer logo, and that's because I previously said, hey, anytime you try and go get the IE logo, just go send back the Fiddler Cap logo. And that's, uh, that's present there in the autoresponder list. And so this allows you to sort of you know, do funny things, but it's also very useful. And one of the scenarios that it's particularly useful for uh, is when you're doing, you know, on stage doing a demo, hey, we want to show off you know, our great performance uh, you know, in, the, in the browser acid test. Uh, but you know, hey, maybe I don't actually have a network connection, or my network connection is a little bit is a little bit flaky. Uh, you can actually basically just play back previously captured traffic. And so what you'll see over in the session list is, is you have these grade sessions that are being played back from the previously captured traffic. And this is very useful you know, if your network connection flakes out and you're like, oh my goodness, like, what am I going to show all these people? I'm showing them you know, a network debugging feature or I'm showing them a, a website and the, the site's down. You, know, you have to tap dance. Well, with Fiddler, you basically have a backdrop where you say, hey, I've just mirrored the whole thing locally and I'm playing it back from a zip file. And you can do this uh, you know, indefinitely into the future. And so if you wanted to look at, say, a prior version of your site, you could actually just use the autoresponder to do that. Fiddler has a very powerful scripting and extensibility system. So the first one, you know, just to understand is, is that Fiddler is a web, uh, web debugging platform. And so you can plug in inspector objects. And so you can plug in custom formats within Fiddler to allow you to, you know, if you've got binary WCF, for instance, is one that was, was released recently, where people want to look at the raw XML in a binary WCF format. Well, Fiddler can actually load this extension and automatically decode it and render it to you. You can have Fiddler extensions which automatically modify traffic. So one of my favorite ones, I've just got a very simple one, the flip images tool. And so now basically when I launch the preview build and I go to the, uh, the IE8 demos homepage and, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a refresh and you'll find now all the images are upside down. It's kind of silly, but it's written in C sharp. It's very simple. It's just a checkbox inside Fiddler. So if there's something that you need to do very often, you can automate that and just make it happen. Uh, Fiddler script is basically the most common way people extend Fiddler. It's just JavaScript. You click rules, customize rules, and now all of your script is uh, available and you can modify uh, requests and responses. So in this case, basically I said, hey, if the URL contains ASP .x, ASPX, you know, color that session in red. I could say at this point, hey, break on this request and use a breakpoint and allow the user to modify it. And you know, in this case, I also say, hey, remove any caching headers that are present. You can do the same thing for the response. You can decode the response, remove any HTTP uh, compression, and then prepend to the top of the response body. Hey, I injected this, which is useful. The extensibility feature allows you to write any C Sharp or VB.NET or any .NET language extensions that extend Fiddler. I don't have time to show them, unfortunately, but there's, there's two of them that are very popular right now. One of them is called Nexpert. Nexpert allows you to browse around the site, and it'll generate a report of basically, are you following performance best practices? Could you do better? Could you be faster? And it also does what's called response time predictions, where it'll say, hey, this, you know, this site we think is going to take this long to load from this kind of connection in this part of the world. And so this can be very useful. You 
uses research uh, done by the Microsoft research team. And then the next one is called Watcher. Watcher is a passive security auditor. And what it'll do is, as you surf around the site, it'll find places where you're not behaving as securely as possible. And those, those places might be a hole that attackers get in to perform a cross-site scripting attack and so forth. Uh, this was released by a, a, a guy named Chris Weber, and he works for a, a, a security company called Cassaba Security. Both of these can be downloaded from the Fiddler website. Test integration, exec action. So if you've got a command line, you know, if you've got a batch process or something and you want to have it control Fiddler, you can just call exec action and pass it a string and it'll send that string to Fiddler and Fiddler's script can respond to it. And then the other thing I announced at PDC is you can actually host the core proxy engine of Fiddler inside your .NET application. Uh, it's called Fiddler Core. And so this allows you to integrate it you know, into full test automation suites. There's no Fiddler UI. You can make whatever modification you want. And so if you've got a very particular bespoke system that you want to make work, where you want to capture HTTP traffic and make some kind of response and you don't want a big fancy UI on it, you can use Fiddler Core. And that's actually how Fiddler Cap was implemented. It's very simple to use. You basically say, hey, start up, start capturing chat traffic. And in this case, every time you get a, a new uh, response, basically, you go write that out to the console. It's very simple to use. So basically, you know, my request for you guys you know, to, to sort of move along the path to becoming more advanced users of Fiddler is to try out the extensions. They're very powerful. They're written by subject matter experts in these topics. And they basically just spit out reports that say, hey, here's what you need to do to make your site better. If you're trying to you know, get repros or captures from the field, Fiddler Cap is a great thing to start out. One of the things I didn't mention is it's being localized into other languages. And so uh, there's actually a version now where uh, basically you know, it's been localized already into Japanese. And so you can send your customer this, and it'll go collect the capture, uh, and they can use this tool to collect uh, traffic. And then also, you know, the last one is to try out the import from the i9 developer tools. And John Seidel is going to be up here in about four minutes or three minutes. Uh, and he's going to talk about the i9 developer tools, try it out. Uh, there's a couple issues with the developer tools tools export right now, but those are being worked on and, and they, they will be addressed in future builds. So certainly if you find problems uh, in debugging your scenarios, let us know. Uh, I encourage you to fill out a feedback form. I'm only here because I got a decent set of feedback at PDC. If you never want to see me again, you can very easily make that happen. Uh, or if you do want to see me again, you can also probably make that happen. Uh, John and I are, you know, unfortunately don't have time for questions after this session, but I'm going to be over in the comments with John after his session. And so if you have questions about Fiddler, just want to chat, want to tell me about a great scenario that I've overlooked or something great that you've done, uh, please let me know. Fiddler2.com slash mix has the, uh, the PowerPoint deck. It's got the things I've talked about. About, and it'll have a link to the video when that goes live on the Mix site. Uh, I'm Eric Lawrence, ericlaw at Microsoft.com, and I encourage your feedback at any time. Thanks so much.